Removing a sick or injured person from the site of an accident is a matter of huge importance, as their life might depend on you making the right arrangements. Unless there's a danger from toxic substances, fires or explosions, do not move the casualty until the suspected fractures have been immobilized and any severe bleeding has stopped. In the event of a medical emergency, such as a spinal injury, heart condition or severe fracture, you'll need to transport the casualty once you have applied first aid. This may be to the medical room or out on deck to await the arrival of the helicopter for medical evacuation. If any serious injuries are suspected, the casualty is also likely to be suffering from shock. So be gentle when touching them, offer reassurance and try to get a clear picture of the nature of the problem. Above all, use common sense. Whenever there is a serious injury on a vessel, the initial recovery of a casualty will be done with the stretcher on board. Although there are various types available, this will typically be a Neil Robertson stretcher. Made of bamboo slats and covered with canvas, it has a series of straps and buckles that secure the casualty and it forms a cylindrical shape when fastened. If there's any vertical lifting to be done, the casualty's arms should be fastened down the outside, as there is a risk of the casualty falling out of the bottom when they are fastened on the inside. As this is a very flexible stretcher, it's ideal for enclosed space rescue. But this flexibility also makes it unsuitable for casualties with suspected spinal injuries, as it offers very little support and bends in the middle. When dealing with a spinal injury, a spinal board would be more appropriate, as it is made of rigid plastic with a series of straps and head blocks to secure the casualty and maintain the alignment of the head, neck and back. Alternatively, you could use a scoop. This is a metal stretcher that splits in half vertically and is sloped in the center. The benefit of a scoop is that each side can be placed alongside the casualty and slid underneath their back. Before being reconnected, allowing the casualty to be placed on the stretcher with minimal movement. If any of these stretchers are required, ensure the casualty is placed on with all the straps and buckles firmly fastened before any movement occurs. Although stretchers should always be used when needed, there are a number of ways to transport a casualty without one. In the circumstance that a casualty only has minor injuries and is able to support their own weight, you can use the human crutch method. Do this by supporting the casualty's injured side with one arm around the waist and putting their arm around your shoulders to assist them to walk. Alternatively, if you are on your own, you can drag them from the scene, but this should only be done in circumstances when the casualty's life is in immediate danger if they're left where they are, as dragging them could cause further injury. If there are two of you, the casualty can be lifted using the fore and aft carry, which is done by having the first person supporting the upper body, whilst the other person supports the legs. When lifting, always bend at the knees, keep your back straight, and use the major muscles in your buttocks and thighs to push up. The method you use to transport a casualty is dependent on their injuries. Familiarize yourself with these techniques so that you are prepared to act when needed. But remember, only lift when there is no other option, as moving someone with a spinal injury could do more harm than good.